While the Northern Hemisphere is being held hostage with winter conditions, the Southern Hemisphere is enjoying the gorgeous, beautiful summer season. Lucky you. If you're close to the equator, depending on your altitude, your conditions are pretty much even Stevens, but uh, that does not make you exempt from this one little pesky fungus called Botrytis. So if you're looking forward to your orchids blooming, here is some important information on what to watch out for, take care of, and be vigilant about to make sure you will be able to enjoy the anticipated blooms to their fullest. Thank you so much for being on the other side of the intro. I appreciate your time and support and I hope that you're doing well. The opening to this video pretty much outlined that not a single environment on the globe is exempt of Botrytis showing up at one point or another. The fact that I have not been able to make a video about Botrytis is a big clue as to which conditions are less favorable for Botrytis to develop. But now that I have two examples that appeared on the patio, I'm glad that I can actually show you Botrytis on my own blooms and give you detailed information about why it happens and how to deal with it if it happens. And of course, answer the question, is Botrytis dangerous for the overall health of the orchid and surrounding orchids perhaps? So the conditions for botrytis to develop and thrive are damp, humid conditions. Poor air circulation and prolonged periods of high humidity can create an ideal environment for botrytis to make an appearance and ruin the experience of orchid blooms that we have been waiting for. It often starts as small water-soaked spots on petals or other parts of the flower, even possibly while the blooms are still in bud form. Water-soaked spots is a key detail that can happen for various reasons, which I will talk about in detail when we get to how to best prevent botrytis from occurring to the best of our ability, especially if we're growing orchids in the environment, which it loves the most, damp and humid conditions. Notice that when I say damp and humid, I'm not referring to warm temperatures, because that is where our mind goes to first when it comes to orchids. Seeing as the orchids we mainly have in private cultivation are tropical orchids that need Need warm temperatures and high humidity, well, there are orchids that do not only grow in tropical conditions. The orchids that grow and do well in higher elevations experience damp and humid conditions as well. If the subject of any fungi appearing on your orchids freaks you out and puts you into panic stations, then let me put your mind at rest that botrytis primarily affects the blooms. It can potentially spread to other parts of the orchid if not addressed promptly. This can lead to more significant issues and compromise the overall health of the plant. Therefore, it is crucial to catch and treat botrytis early. Thankfully though, botrytis shows itself very quickly and it is also dealt with relatively quickly by taking the following steps to deal with it quickly. First of all, isolate your orchid if at all possible. Possible. If you notice any affected blooms, then isolate that orchid to prevent the spread of the fungus. Remove and discard any infected blooms and any nearby tissue to prevent the spread. Nearby tissue can involve the flower stem, seeing as that is the closest to the blooms, and by just removing the whole spike and all the blooms, pretty much that is all you need to do to prevent botrytis from spreading. Of course, make sure that you discard the blooms quickly. Don't leave them lying around in your grow space or in the vicinity of any other orchids while you go about your business taking care of other orchids. There is no in the meantime, I'll just put these blooms and the spikes over here. No, get rid of them straight away, wash your hands, sanitize your hands, and then get back to what you were actually intending to do with your orchids. Then, improve air circulation. Enhance ventilation around the orchids by spacing them properly and ensuring good air circulation. You may need to, for a little time, reduce humidity and avoid overwatering. That will help maintain proper humidity levels to create an environment less favorable for botrytis. Again, this is something I will elaborate on in greater detail. Give me a minute. I will get back to the subject because of the variables involved when it comes to what can all be considered 
humidity. You can also consider using fungicides specifically formulated for orchids. This, in my opinion, is optional. Usually, by removing the blooms and the spikes, the botrytis is dealt with. But, in order for this not to be a reoccurring thing, having to cut off the blooms you've been wanting to see for so long, some tips for prevention are to regularly inspect your orchids for signs of stress or disease. Keep the growing area clean and practice good orchid hygiene at all times. It is always stated that healthy orchids are better able to cope with possible diseases wanting to manifest themselves, but I'm of the opinion that you can have a super healthy orchid and still you can get botrytis on the blooms. So if you have botrytis, don't think that your orchid is not healthy. It points more to what is happening or not happening in your environment, or even where your orchid initially came from if she has just arrived in your collection and she came in bud. This is where the damp and humid conditions can be the make or break of your healthy orchid in showing botrytis on the blooms. Cold temperatures, especially in the presence of moisture, can create conditions conducive to botrytis growth and here is how. In cool environments, if there's moisture on the orchid blooms or surrounding surfaces, cold and damp conditions provide a suitable environment for the fungus to spread. Avoid getting water from misting onto your orchids during the temperature changes that are fluctuating between a little too cold back to warm again. While your airflow may be great, misting orchids during those conditions will invite botrytis like a hostess sending out invitations to a party. Botrytis will be the first to send its confirmation and it will attend. Also, your orchid may be new and you received it in bud, brought it from the nursery or wherever and the blooms open with the fungal spotting appearing. While nurseries have ideal conditions for botrytis to develop, before you pick up the phone and call in a complaint or take your orchid it back and ask for a refund, think condensation. Here is a scenario to keep in mind when it comes to condensation. It is a beautiful hot and steamy day when you go shopping and pick up your orchid in bud. You get it into your air-conditioned car and drive your new orchid home. From hot to cool, condensation will happen. Remember earlier I mentioned reducing humidity? Well, a change in temperature from hot to cool, you may not have that high humidity, but condensation will take care of it for you. So you see, your orchid is perfectly fine, healthy, and ready to bring you much joy, but that one detail while taking her home causes condensation and your blooms may open up with botrytis. Consider the same possibility happening if you're receiving a new shipment of orchids and they promise heat packs to ensure that your orchid will be fine on their travels to you. While it sounds comforting that there are heat packs included, I am not a fan of them for precisely the reason I just mentioned. The stress from temperature changes coupled with damp conditions can contribute to the development of the fungus. And transportation is stressful enough. Now add an element into the box that creates a certain surrounding around your orchids while the main temperature around the package is cold. Well, condensation can happen, and with that, any buds or blooms may then develop botrytis, even though the orchid herself is healthy. Reverse the above if you're receiving orchids or transporting orchids from a warm garden center during the colder months of the year, and you're getting into your heated car. Condensation will happen under those circumstances as well. And yes, your new orchid will be wrapped up to handle the short trip from the warm garden center to your car, but that nicely wrapped package will be the environment where condensation will take place. Open your wrapped orchid while in the car and really hustle indoors fast when you get home. <laughs> And if you are receiving an order with the knowledge that there is a heat pack in the box, open the box, get some air in between your packages. Unfortunately, we are told to wait for several hours for the temperature to equal out when it comes to opening our orchid orders, just not to shock the plants further. But there is no harm in opening the package and at least allow some air to get in, even if we have to wait a little longer before unwrapping the individual orchids. And just to add why I rarely get what well, I grow my orchids in a climate that usually averages 30% humidity all year round. While the summer of 2023 was an exception and I had consistent humidity of 75% and up for three months straight, that is the first time and maybe the last time for a long time, so I consider my environment dry. With a lot of airflow because I get to have my orchids outside for the most part, this kind of climate is hostile for botrytis. But now that I had two 
two examples to show you, and after the information provided, you may already know why it happened. These two candidates are opposite of each other, so let me elaborate, just to give you an idea as to what's going on here, because one wants to be outside in the cold, but the other one not so much, and yet both have botrytis. So, both these orchids live outside during the winter, and a Dendrobium nobilis should not even show a single bloom during December. So, out of season, high humidity, cold temperatures, even with airflow, the air holds the humidity, et voila, we have botrytis. With my Banda Chao Praia, well, while she always blooms for the second time in a calendar year, the temperatures are not to her liking, and even if it doesn't rain, I still mist her daily. The mist of my sprayer falls on her blooms, et voila, cold temperatures, higher humidity, even with the airflow, which carries the humidity, we have botrytis. I'm not concerned one bit for the health of these two orchids and others because I can take the blooms off if I so choose. And if I don't, then it won't be an issue either, because they are very well separated A from each other and from other orchids. In general, botrytis is not detrimental to the health of the orchid, it is mainly just a disappointment to see it happening. After all, we grow our orchids to see the pretty blooms and not to have to look at them all Dalmatian-like and then cut them off prematurely. And finally, I want to point out that the orchids that are native to higher elevations, colder temperatures, combined with high humidity, they will be less susceptible to botrytis because it is in their DNA to bloom during the times of their season when these conditions are met and for that reason my dendrobium victoria regina blooms are gorgeous pristine long-lasting and beautiful so if you found this video helpful and it gave you peace of mind in the event that you see black or brown spots on your blooms, I would really appreciate it if you would be so kind as to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Should this be the first time you came across my channel, that would be so appreciated as well. Let me know if you have any questions and if you don't, say hi in the comments. Let me know how you're doing. Love, love, love love hearing from you. In the meantime, thank you for watching and have yourself a fabulous day, but I attach a condition to that that you stay safe. Take care. Bye!